Sage Wanderer here, and welcome to the sheep pen. Bah! No goats allowed. <laughs> so today, we're going to ask the age-old question. Was Jesus a magician? Don't, don't, don't! <laughs> well, one interesting note that makes you wonder how he was perceived, at least, because the earliest depictions known of Jesus Christ are on sarcophagi. What's a sarcophagi? It's, uh, that's plural for sarcophagus. It's the cover they put over tombs uh, to seal the body and make sure nobody digs it up or no animals dig it up or whatever. Keeps it all sealed up because it's nice and heavy. And they're usually very ornate and they have some kind of imagery or pictures, uh, you know, writing etched into the top of them. And there are these sarcophagi that show images of Jesus, and this is from the second century. So, uh, this is the you know first hundred years after Jesus. You find these images of Jesus doing his miracles, like turning water into wine, and he's using a magic wand. He's using a magic wand. Sage has a magic wand. I told you, Sage was dangerous. He's got a magic wand. He's not a Christian. Ah! <sighs> no, it's just a back scratcher. Which can be magic when you live alone, man. I'm telling you, woo, you could be in the middle of the night and you're like, ah, I can't reach it. And so you have the back scratcher. <laughs> it's not a magic wand. But there are pictures, images, the earliest known images portraying Jesus doing his miracles while wielding a magic wand. Look it up, it'll trip you out. And even in the Bible, Jesus is accused of being a magician. I mean, think about it. He's doing miracles right up to raising people from the dead. He's healing the sick. He's healing people that have been blind since birth, right? He's finding money in the mouths of fishes, right? He's spitting in the blind man's eye, okay, and, and healing them of blindness. So this all very much just looks like magic to the Sanhedrin. And so he is accused especially the exorcism how can someone cast out the devil unless they're from the devil was their logic so they accuse jesus of casting out the devils by the power of the devil and accuse him of being empowered by his beelzebub and in this jesus uses simple logic he says maybe he was wielding a magic wand when he said it maybe he wasn't i don't know <laughs> but he said uh why what sense does it make for me to cast out devils if I'm working for the devil? we we'll give you a little Texas paraphrase here. If I'm working for the devil, then what makes sense? What sense does it make for me to cast out devils? A kingdom divided against itself cannot stand. So it doesn't make sense. If I'm fighting devils, I must be against the devil. Therefore, I can't be working for the devils. Makes sense. And I'll make the same argument for people who, who want to... Uh, cast aspersions against what I do here. Uh, I'm fighting the devil, so I can't be of the devil if I'm fighting the devil, if I'm trying to get you to rise up and fight the devil, <laughs> right? So, but I find it interesting that this magic um, idea was tossed at him, but if you look at it, maybe Jesus is a magician. I mean, what's the difference between what Jesus did and say what other um, magicians do? Uh, look, for instance, at some of the great battles of holy men of God against magicians, against these sorcerers. Well, Moses, for instance, was faced with the with these Egyptian priests that could turn their staffs, their magic wands, into snakes, right? And so I believe it's Moses that throws down his staff and it turns into a snake that eats the other snakes, right? To prove that his God is more powerful than their God. So there, you know, magic is real, witchcraft is real, and the power of God is real. And to be honest with you, it's the same thing. The only difference is which side of the cosmic war do you work for? Are you a magician of the power of light, or are you a magician of the power of dark? And what does magician mean anyway? To me, it simply means rearranging matter. It means defying the laws of physics and the laws of nature, doing things that seem impossible, manifesting miracles, 
whether they be healings or exorcisms, whether they be, um, we'll get into later on what, what feats of manifestation are. Um, an example I think of a really great feat of manifestation is when Jesus tells one of his disciples, if you go down this certain road, turn left here, turn right there, under this tree, there'll be a donkey already tied up. Grab him for me and bring him to me. How did he know there'd be a donkey tied up there? Did he just, did, was somebody previously determined to go there and tie the donkey up so that they would be there when they needed him? Or did Jesus just see that? Or did he just manifest that, right? The Bible is full of these kind of supernatural happenings, okay? Um, like Moses and his staffs. So we can go back and look at Elijah fighting against the prophets of Baal where he calls down fire from heaven to light this wet wood on fire, okay? But also, Baal, the prophets of Baal could do this too. It's just that ultimately the power of God is stronger than the power of uh, these demons. But they do have power. These magicians have power. And I find it interesting that I, I did a little search on the origin of magic wands, and there's a lot of different... Uh, Origins, none of them make a lot of sense. But to me, it, it's it's simply a matter that the magician just happened to have a stick in his hand. You're like, what are you talking about? The the magic wand isn't magic at all. It's just happened to be in his hand. Well, I keep going back to the Psalms, where it says that uh, his rod and his staff they comfort me. And I've done a teaching on this before that looks at the rod and the staff as the tools of a uh, of a shepherd, the simple tools of a shepherd. A staff is like a walking stick. We still use them today. If you're out in the wilderness walking around, if you're hiking to and fro before roads and sidewalks were around, right, when you're making your own way through the woods, you definitely need a walking stick. Even to this day, they sell them in stores. Uh, you can buy them for backpackers. They're lightweight. They're telescoping and made out of aluminum. But when you fold them out, they serve the same purpose. They shoo away stick, uh, snakes from the path when you're down in the south. They can help you ford across rivers and keep your balance when you're crossing streams. Uh, you know, if you're crossing a log, you can use them like the circus guys did to, to balance yourself instead of sticking your arms out like that. You can use the staff for more uh, balance. Um, it's just a lot of, it's a weapon. It's a simple weapon, right? A shepherd's uh, staff has a crook on the end, which we all um, associate with Jesus, uh, the shepherd's crook where you can use that to grab these sheep around the neck. If you ever want to see some guys use that tool in modern times, go to a cattle auction and, uh, and watch the stockmen move big animals around by hooking them around the neck with this uh, hooked cane and grabbing them by the tail and just haranguing them wherever they need to move them. <laughs> so, and then the rod I talked about in another teaching. The rod was just a simple uh, outdoorsman's weapon. Basically, we're talking about a club like a steel pipe, right? A little a, a green sapling about as long as your arm, right? And, you know, hey, breaking up a dog fight, for instance, uh, that's the two tools you want to have. You want to have a rod and a staff. You want to have a walking stick and a club about that long. So you can stick that long stick between them, pry them apart, and start smacking the, the uh, fending dog who's starting it. There's always one that starts it, right? He won't let go. If you can drive him back, break the fight up, right? And, um... Those two, the, the long stick and the short stick together, are part of martial arts. They're they're the the tools of the wanderer. Um, the rod is a, is a weapon that only under strict tyranny is that weapon ever uh, controlled. Where swords or knives might be illegal, uh, short sticks about that long are only illegal in L.A. and New York <laughs> and other places of tyranny. <laughs> Look out, Sage just got his magic wand. I look kind of like Harry Potter today, don't I? Like old Harry Potter. People always tell me I look like Mark Hamill, old Mark Hamill from Star Wars. I don't know. Do you see that? Maybe so. Maybe when my hair is a little longer than it is now. Anyway, I'm wandering around like Sage Wanderer ought to today. Um, so you've got these, these, um, these old wandering sages. I tell you another thing that might be responsible for the magic wand mythology um, is that if you're a gatherer of herbs 
Because there's see, there's several forms of magic slash medicine. Really, medicine is just another form of magic. Because you have the magic, which is the manifestation that, like I talk about, the the moving of matter, the saying of a spell or a prayer. Uh, if I teach you a ritualistic prayer, you know what? That a better name for these uh, ancient men is not sorcerer, because sorcery and witchcraft calls upon demon powers. It's uh, calling upon uh, the demonic to do your bidding. And there's a price to pay. It's selling your soul to the devil, right? What I, what I like to call people like Jesus and Elijah and, um, you know, um, Elisha, even uh, Daniel and um, Joseph from the Old Testament, um, these people um, were what I would call, um, oh, what's the phrase again? Ritualistic experts, right? They were ritual experts. They were experts in using ritual. Magic words, prayer, um, isn't baptism a ritual? Isn't it very much uh, associated? It's very similar to a, like a spell that witches might do. I'm not saying that we're witches. I'm saying it's all the same thing. The only difference is who you work for. And also the methods that you use vary. But some of the methods that they used, we use. Including, it might even have been the magic wand. But like I was saying, it might just be that the magic wand was in your hand already. Because if you're walking, you're carrying your walking stick. If you want to be really threatening or get a point across, you know, like a, like a teacher with a pointer. Now they have laser pointers. Is that a lightsaber magic wand? Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> it's a light wand, literally. It's just to accentuate your point, right? It's something to wave beside your fist. And that may be where the, the idea of a magic wand comes from. Some say it goes clear back to Sumerian days when some technological device was used by the sons of God that looked down on the daughters of men. That's a whole other UFO, UFO coffee talk thing we'll do sometime. But I, I am a magician. I'm a magician like Jesus was a magician. Like Elijah was a magician. Like Elisha was a magician. And if you believe the story I'm about to tell you, I'm a magician just like Peter was a magician. What? Peter was a magician? What? Well, there's this incredible story in a book that was found in the Hogmadi Library. It may be older than the Gospels. And it's called the Acts of the Disciple Peter and the Apostles. It's called the Acts of Peter and the Apostles. And it's very much like another book of Acts, okay? And in this, that which, which was not included in Nicaea, but was around well before Nicaea, um, this, in this story, Simon the Sorcerer, who we find in the New Testament, who tried to buy the technology for casting out demons, essentially, he wanted to buy the trick. And uh, he tried to do it on his own, and the devils were like, I know who, and he, he did it in Jesus' name and in Paul's name, in Peter's name, he said, I, and, but the devils replied back to Simon the sorcerer. This is in the Bible. I know Peter, and I know, and I know Jesus, but I don't know you. <laughs> Who are you? And they jump on him, right? And he barely makes it out of the exorcism alive. Like this demoniac just basically starts shredding him, which is not supposed to happen when you have the uh, true authority over demons. So, but that's in the Bible, the story of Simon the sorcerer, the magician. Um, but we also have him in this uh, non-biblical but very ancient uh, text called, uh, you know, the Acts of Peter and the Apostles. We have a battle of wizards, right? Just like when, um, just like when Elijah threw down with the prophets of Baal. It's a very similar thing, and uh, they're having this wizard off, and uh, Simon is saying that he's superior to Peter and he can do things that Peter can't do. Yeah, Peter can do this and this, but can he do this? He said, I can elevate myself. I can levitate. I can fly through the air. And uh, so he proceeds to do this. Simon the sorcerer launches himself like Chris Angel. If you've seen Chris Angel walk on water, you've seen Chris Angel. These are, these are sorcerers uh, empowered from the dark side. They're empowered from the demonic. From the, uh, from the demonic. And 
It's up to us to start operating in signs and wonders. This is how we combat them, just like Peter did in this story. So Simon the sorcerer launches himself up and he starts flying around all over the place, right? And the whole city is in awe of him. Like they're, everybody's looking at him going, wow, you know, we've got Superman basically. Look at this guy. And they're all freaking out. And they're kind of looking at Peter like, okay, join him. Are you? Can you fly? Because Simon can fly. So we're going to follow this guy and his gods and his method, not yours, Peter. They, Peter can feel the doubt and disbelief in God coming all over these people because the sign and wonder that Simon just did right in front of all of them. And um, so Peter says this basic but very ritualistic prayer. And he, he basically says to God that, hey, all of these people are going to lose faith in the signs and wonders that I've already done. They're going to lose faith in the signs and wonders that Jesus did. If, if you don't empower me uh, right now to stop him from doing this and prove to them that, that you, know, you're, you know, you're more powerful than Simon's, you know, uh, magic. So God, take him down right now. Take him down out of the sky right now. And so Simon the sorcerer falls out of the air. And I, if memory serves, I can't remember how that story ends. Either he's grievously wounded. I think he's like, wound, he has to like be carried away. Like he gets all broken up. Oh, that's what it is. Uh, Peter calls it out. He says, he says, you're going to fall from the sky and your leg is going to break in three places. <laughs> and that's what happened. Simon falls out of the sky. Simon the sorcerer falls out of the sky and breaks his leg in three piece, places. Just like Peter said. So, and that's in this other apocryphal book. And so, um, now, magic and, and Christianity, when you look at it from a perspective and step out of a Christian perspective and look at it from a third-party perspective, true Christianity with signs and wonders looks very much like magic. Uh, these apostles, bishops, these uh, ancient bishops, the, are miracle workers, even modern... Um, faith healers they start to look like magicians what's the difference? the difference is who you bat for it's not even the method apparently Jesus used a magic wand and I don't I mean, his was probably a rod not a back scratcher but <laughs> um, you know some people are like sage you shouldn't even talk about that those things are those things are tools of the devil I'm like, I'm like wait a minute I'm pretty sure that that Satanists go through the door to get in and out of their place of worship. Should we use the window since they use doors? I'm sure they drove there in a car. Should we crawl on our knees or should we use a jetpack because we don't use a car like them? You, you understand that music is just a tool. You're going to find out that there's, that there's very little difference between what we do as spiritual um, supernatural warriors for Christ it's very similar to what magicians did it's just we're doing it for the purpose of enhancing the the, um, the message of Christ and spreading the message of Christ it's the gift from God honestly supernatural power is a gift from God for all of us to have it's not even meant for special people to have you're supposed to have supernatural power over your own life over your own health over your own finances, right? You're supposed to walk in this spiritual power and authority that Jesus gave us. He did these things, and we were we are supposed to do even greater things than him in his name. He walked on water. When was the last time you did something like that? So people that would talk against what I'm talking about, I would say, where's your signs and wonders? Because you're not like Jesus. He got accused of being a sorcerer. I've been accused of being a sorcerer on this channel. <laughs> I have for teaching things like supernatural faith healing, exorcism, and uh, speaking in tongues. You know, recently I just, I just in this research to make this video, um, I found a some kind of uh, Islamic holy man, and he encountered some Christian missionaries in uh, Frankfurt, Germany. Yeah, and they were on the street doing street mission work and he started doing battle with them because he deduced that they were magicians 
that then they were summoning jinn. It was the same argument. These people were casting out devils and speaking in tongues and healing the sick in street ministry. And you ought to hear this this uh, Islamic maham, uh, maham or whatever this is, Islamic teacher, a young evangelist type person, pretty good English. And he's telling his this story of how he just couldn't believe these other people couldn't see that these Christians were obviously sorcerers. And that, that what they're doing must be by the power of, of demons. Because they speak in tongues and they say all these magic words. And they have all these magic phrases. And all they didn't have was their magic wand apparently in his eyes. He just saw them as clearly magicians. And then what cracked me up in a total act of total self-unawareness was that he starts then using a prayer, an Islamic prayer, to shut down their divination that he sees as demonic, and he's using supernatural power to beat their supernatural power. And from here, he looks like a magician too. <laughs> I mean, he's like, you're a magician. I'm going to use magician tricks to undo your magicianness because my mag magic is from my God, and your magic must be from demons. If I'm doing it, it must be from God, and if you're doing it, it must be from demons. That seems to be... <laughs> the common thought that just cracked me up where he was started using the same magical methods that he was accusing them of being demonically inspired to do <sighs> the bottom line is supernatural spiritual power is supernatural spiritual power and if you get it through these fallen angels if you get it through making a deal with the devil if you get it through uh, necromancy, if you get it through pulling up the dead and forcing them to uh, do your bidding, if you're calling up demons and trying to control them to make things happen, especially and uh, obviously that's, uh, people only do those kind of things when, when their desires are ungodly. I mean, they're going to have a, a, a demonic reason behind wanting to do that to begin with. Right? It's why they go to the devil because God ain't listening. Not for those requests right but if your requests are and your and your intention is godly if you come at this uh, as a light worker if you come at this in the name of Jesus Christ if you come at this with the purpose of magnifying God Almighty and making his um, his will manifested on the earth if you do this to spread love joy peace health wealth you know it's just if it's good by your fruit Jesus said, how do you tell fake disciples from real disciples? How do you tell these magicians from people who are operating in the power of God? And he said, it's your fruit. It's the love you have for one another and the fruit of your ministry. What is the fruit? Are people being healed? Are people being set free from demons? Honestly, the church today is not producing fruit. These people are spectators of spiritual things, not, uh, not participants in spiritual things. They talk about it, they think about it, they watch it, they, they critique it, but most of these people don't really operate in any kind of spiritual power whatsoever. They're not involved in the spiritual war. Like I've been saying, either you're tearing down one kingdom and building the other, or you're uh, or you're tearing down one kingdom or building the other. <laughs> right? So if you're not actively working against the devil, you're actively working for him. Let me say that again. If you're not actively working against the devil, you're actively working for him. Your apathy is also a choice. This spiritual authority and power is available to us to manifest blessings, to manifest healing, to bring about change in the world, to free people from demonic from demonic activity in their lives to heal heal mental illness to heal addiction all of this is the work of the christian that we should be doing but instead we sit around teaching people to have to be more strong-willed to overcome their urges really that's we should be using supernatural power to heal these people of their brokenness we should be using supernatural power to heal ourselves of our brokenness we should be trying to attain the next level of spiritual power. We shouldn't be afraid of, uh, of witchcraft. We should see it for what it is. These people are powerful. We need to up our game in the spirit realm in Jesus' world and stop being spectators because these people are making changes in the world that make the devil happy. 
people who worship the devil, people who operate in witchcraft, people who operate in black magic, right? People who use, misuse authority that they are not uh, uh, authorized to operate in. These people who make deals with the demonic. These people who operate in necromancy. They're manifesting chaos into this world. They're getting rich from it. They're getting what they want out of life while destroying everything good that gets in their path. And we are doing nothing because we don't think... we w Christians will say, oh yeah, witchcraft is real, some of them. But they, but they don't believe in... In, that if they lay hands on the sick, they'll recover. I, honestly, if I lay hands on the sick and they don't recover, I'm shocked. I'm not saying I'm some super healer and you should come here and get healed. I'm just saying I come in it with that kind of faith. I believe first and foremost, it's going to happen. Right? Shoot, I might try a magic wand next time. <laughs> if it's good enough for Jesus. <laughs> There's depictions of the apostles doing miracles while holding these magic wands. I wonder if they weren't just like lecterns, like the baton that you use when you lead the band. They're just a tool, a stick, something to accentuate your, it's like a riding crop, like, rah, <laughs> when you're preaching. But at any rate, they had them. Harry Potter uses them. <laughs> Listen, you guys can't be afraid of this stuff. You have to understand it. You have to embrace the supernatural um, power that God gave you to change this world. Otherwise, we're just watching Rome burn. Otherwise, we're just sitting here while the world goes to hell in a handbasket. A lot of my patriot friends out there are wanting to take up arms, but I'm telling you, that just feeds the dark side. There is a supernatural, powerful reaction and response that needs to happen to this rising evil in the world. It comes through faith, through believing that anything Christ did, we can do. Bullies always want to get on TV. <laughs> I'm not kidding. This stuff is real. Do you believe it or not? Do you believe that Jesus did what he did or don't you? Do you believe he raised Lazarus from the dead? Do you believe that he turned water into wine? Do you believe that he healed the blind? Do you believe that he put gold into the mouth of a fish so people could pay their taxes? If you don't, you're probably not really a Christian. Like, I don't know what it is you do on Sunday. Maybe you should just start going to the lake and forget the whole thing. But if you believe this, believe it. Walk in it. Operate in it. Manifest it in your life. Do what you got to do to find that inner faith. To walk in spiritual power and authority. Lay hands on the sick and expect them to recover. Be surprised if it don't happen. Back up and go, what did I do wrong? It's, that's, that, let's do it again. <laughs> the end of time is coming. Evil is rising like it never has before. I predicted all of this five years ago. I did a video called The Rising of a New Dark Age. Uh, got copied, went viral in a couple of other countries in different formats. Didn't get a whole lot here because when something really resonates with people, they just copy it or start saying it, right? Uh, start preaching your sermon almost verbatim, and that happened with that. And since then, it's been proven to be true. Whether it's because CERN's been opened up, has opened up a porthole to hell, or a portal to hell, or whether uh, we're in the end times and Abaddon has re been released with all these demons, all I can tell you is I feel the dark energy, don't you? There is a disturbance in the force. It's time for the sons of God to rise up. This is becoming a catchphrase with me. It is time for the sons of God to arise. Creation trembles at the anticipation of the rising of the sons of God. The thousand year millennial reign is at hand. We need to step into it, walk into it, manifest it. And we're going to do it by getting through this end time struggle. Through the power of God, through the supernatural power of God. These demons need to tremble when your shadow crosses them. You need to be so spiritually tuned in for these end times that when you walk down the street, a demoniac doesn't know whether to throw himself at your mercy or run away screaming. I'm so tired of powerless, 
milk toast Christians who put all their faith in their pharmaceutical cures. They put all their faith in their doctors. They trust the science, but they don't trust God. Either you believe this crap or you don't. I'm drawing the line in the sand. If you believe in the supernatural power of God, it's time to stand up and make your voice be heard. Whom this day shall you serve? The line in the sand is being drawn. Creation trembles at the anticipation of the rise of the sons of God. It's time to put down this alien invasion through the manifestation of supernatural power and authority just like Jesus did. Today is the day. Bind together with me. Stand in covenant with me. Support this ministry by making a donation to PayPal. Write me a letter of affirmation. Send me a, a special gift in the mail. Send me an email. Let's talk about it. If you want to enter into some logical uh, uh, discussion with humility and grace, I would love to engage in that with you via email. Right? Tell me in the comment section what do you think about all of this. And I'll leave you with this blessing. May the Lord bless and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May you be blessed in everything you do. And yet may you become a powerful cannon of light to destroy the works of the enemy. We'll see you next time on the sheep pen where no goats are allowed. Bye.